Sony don't miss me. Ballin' like Houston, ayy, feelin' like Whitney. I need a bag, bruh, send it through quickly. I'm making his dog, like I'm in the big leagues. Told him that I gotta go, dog. I'm riding a road, y'all. I think that I'm back in my bag now. Welcome, football fans, football fans, USFL fans, but most importantly, Houston Gamblers fans, to another episode of Gamblers Table Talk, featuring me, Ace. And today I am joined by Gamblers wide receiver and the owner of the top uh, reception, receiving play of season one of the USFL, T.O. Redding. T.O., how you doing, man? Doing good. What about you? I'm doing great, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I'm glad, you know, I was able to get basically the entire returning wide receiver core before training camp, and you were the last one I had to get. You know, that last big fish out there, I yeah. had to hook you in. So thank you so much for coming on. No problem, man. Thanks for having me. All right. And well, before we jump into your entire football career, all that, the play against the Maulers where you had the one handed catch that was played literally everywhere. It was played on Undisputed with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Uh, how did it feel to do that play in season one? Um, it felt real good for real. Like that was like my play, like to establish my playing time a little more because I wasn't playing it as much as I wanted to last year before that game. Mm -hmm. And when I made that play, I just kind of solidified that spot of just playing a little bit more and just kept giving me that confidence that I needed to keep making plays, either it was on offense or special teams. So that was really a big confidence booster right there as well. Oh, 100%. And for people who maybe didn't know who you were at the time or didn't recognize your name, that really put you on the map. But for people like me who did my due diligence and my research, I was like, it's about time. Like, I knew that that was coming. Uh, we did a preseason show before, right before the season started. And my mm -hmm. co-host on the show that we were doing, he said we did, you know, the sleeper picks for stars on each team. Mm -hmm. And his pick was you. So, you know, uh, we yeah. weren't surprised. We were ready. We uh, knew yeah. that I a catch like that was going to come. Yeah. Oh, we research. did our research. Oh, yeah. And I did my research for this interview. So let's go back all the way. You're from Michigan. You went to Michigan Collegiate High School. Mm -hmm. But I want to know, was it high school? Was it earlier? I always ask every player, when did you fall in love with football? When did you realize this is what I want to do for the rest of my life? Um, I had to say when I was younger. I mean, I was around like nine years old. I'm more of a, more of a basketball player at first. But then once I started playing football, like that first year, I remember I ended up like getting getting hit like a blind side hit and end up getting injured. And I was like, man, I don't think I want to play no more. And then one time we was leaving the camp. My dad was like, I told him like, yeah, I don't think I want to play no more. He was like, oh, you, you going up there. And I went up there. I remember we, I was running laps and was like kind of crying. And then that practice was like one of my best practices. And I was just like, okay, I can start playing this a little bit more. And then that, that following game, I had a pretty good game. And ever since then, I was just like, after the season ended, I was like, man, I miss football. And then after that, I just start practicing at it in the front yard, my cousin, everything, brother, and just was trying to get better at it, watch football videos, everything. I love it. I do enjoy the fact that you took a big hit playing receiver and you came back and kept playing offense. Usually when I talk to players and, you know, they played both ways or anything like that way back in Pop Warner high school, they're like, yeah, I got hit really hard one time on offense. And that's why I'm on defense now. You know, they oh, just yeah, decided yeah. they couldn't take the hit. That's but you exactly. were like, no, no, I got it. Yeah, I'm gonna just, so, uh, that's why I got better at just working in the front yard. I used to just try to juke a lot or try to just make a non-contact move so nobody can hit me as hard as they could or just always look out my peripherals for big hits. So ever since then, I would be, if it's an interception or just uh, running down the field, I'm always looking where I'm at, see where everybody is so I won't get that that hit no more. I love it. I mean, props to you, man. You stayed with the offense, and it's paid off. So look at that. But you played through high school. What positions did you play? Were you playing both ways? I'm not totally sure how the Michigan high school football scene looks. Um, yeah, um, I played Texas. both ways. I played um, a little bit of safety, corner, and also played kicker and punter as well. So no I was doing a little, try to do a little bit of everything, kick returner, punt returner, and receiver, as you know. So basically, we could field an entire team of T.O. Reddings if we needed to? Uh, <laughs> not linemen, though. No, not linemen. Not linemen. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, We'd have to put a little weight on. 
Yeah, heavy <laughs> pressure in the backfield on that line. Yes, yes, definitely need you running back there as a quarterback. But I like that. What made you decide that you wanted to stick to offense once you moved on and eventually went to Bowling Green? Um, I think it was just like I felt more comfortable at receiver. I mean, I like DB as well, but I just felt like since I was younger, I was just – more comfortable at receiver and would like to play that. Like, I think I could prolong it more with that. But if I was ever moved to DB, I feel like I can play that as well. So I was never, like, scared to just play both sides of the ball. But receiver was just – I know a couple of times in college the DB coach room on me, but it, the offense wouldn't let me leave. So that's what happened. So I always stayed on offense. Well, I almost thought because season one of the USFL, you know, it was a very small roster number that they had. I almost thought maybe they'd pull a receiver and say, hey – Go jump back there. You know, kind of like the Raiders did with Isaiah Zuber in the preseason of the NFL. Yeah, that's my boy yeah. Zuber. And he caught it, got him with uh, Oski, too. I was like, ooh, got him a good pick. <laughs> and a nice little strong catch. So I was like, man. But that's crazy because one of the um, coaches last year, a couple of them used to come up to me like, just come over to the dark side, to the defensive room. I was like, man, uh-huh. I got to talk to Coach Sumlin. And then I don't know what used to have him. He used to be talking every day before the meetings or something. They'd be like, yeah, come over here. We'll um, pitch you in a couple schemes, and you can play a little DB. And I was like, oh, sound good to me. Well, I can make some plays on defense, too. But Coach Sumlin, Sumlin was like, no, nah, no, nah, we need to keep him. Yeah, man. Sumlin, yeah, you be, be on a different level. I get that. So what made you want to go on to Bowling Green after high school? What made you want to go over there? Um, So it was between them and Central Michigan. And I had went to both, like, I had visited both and went to a game and saw how both was playing and what type of offense we're in. So talking to my dad and everything and seeing the schemes and talking to the coaches, like, I felt like the offense was more of a fit for me to play. Like, it was more of a spread um, offense as well at that time. So I felt like I fit better in there. And then the school was about an hour and a half from me. So it wasn't that far. It was just a decent little drive up the road so I, my family can vi- come visit me as well so that's what i felt was better for me to go it is crazy to me hearing about you know the northern part of the country the northeast everything's so close i'm down here in texas and i mean even just to go to houston from here is a three and a half hour drive so yeah. i know and that's close that's texas close Man. you know so it's just a, it's different. It's a different world down here. Because state so big that that's, it's that's huge. Yeah. It's huge, man. But Bowling Green, you have a spectacular season year. Go on, but you still end up undrafted. But that's cool because then it lets you get picked up by your hometown team, the Detroit Lions. Was it cool? Did it kind of feel poetic at that point when you got that that call? Uh, as, as at that time, I was just like in. A, shocked in a moment for real like I'm getting to go play for my hometown team so it was a lot of nerves and everything in it I know a lot of people was calling like you going to the Lions and everything so it was pretty cool though I like really I enjoyed the process a little bit but you know it was a couple um bumps and bruises in there a little bit with Patricia and everything you know talk to a couple players about him and you'll you'll get the story about him but other than that man I got um some some good vets to help me out out there like Marvin Jones was pretty cool um Kenny Galladay was a um, cool dude and Darius Slay so they were pretty cool and helped me out that's awesome oh I'm a Vikings fan at heart but mm-hmm. it's kind of like they're the lovable Lions you know we can't we can't hate them I don't know why it when the team we beat up on them enough although you guys seem to have our numbers sometimes which is annoying but Lions are just a team I don't know why people don't like them like if anybody says I, I don't like the Lions I'm like why that's weird you know, whatever. But then you kind of bounce around. You go to the Redskins. So, well, now they're the Commanders. And then you end up on the enemy team. You're a Packer. And that's where you end up spending the most time. What was that experience like? Um, That was crazy. Like, I know a lot of people that, like, that's the rival right there. Everybody be like, yeah, we don't like Green Bay. Everybody don't like Green mm-hmm. Bay. So I had signed with Green Bay and was there. And everybody kept calling me, like, you really play for them? Is this a joke? I'm like, no, nah, man, I really play for them. But it was pretty cool, man. Like, I got to play with Devontae Adams, learned a lot from him. Got to play with Aaron, learned something, learned something from him. And met some cool people there as well, man. Uh, pretty good experience out there. Uh, historic franchise and everything. Them home games right there, they got one of the best fans, like, fan bases I've oh, known yeah. playing football. So I remember training camp every time, riding that bike. i never forget that. 
riding down, down the tunnel with the bike with the kids and everything before practices and just training up there, man. It was pretty cool. Like his story. That's all they do is football. It's like in the middle of the backyard of like uh neighborhood. So that's owned by them. So it was pretty cool, man. Oh yeah. I I say I hate the Packers. I've been saying for literally over a decade that I hate Aaron Rodgers. I'm like, I can't stand him. It's because I'm a Vikings fan. But I think it's funny once you talk to people who have been within the organization and stuff. I'm sure if I went over there, there's some really, really nice dudes, especially Wisconsin. Man, everybody from Wisconsin seems to be pretty nice. It's that Midwestern nice, you know. Yeah. So I'm glad that was a good experience. And then after that, then you started diving into the spring football scene. And it seems like you've really been in every spring football scene. Like, you're a good name to know in this area. Yeah, man. It's like, I remember I had entered the – um. I entered the draft at first, and then I didn't get picked up. So I'm just like, dang, I can't get picked up. So I was wondering what was next. And like right before Christmas, like I got called from um, the New York Guardians, mm -hmm. and they had said they signed me. And then I had like a week before I had to leave and everything. So I got settled in. And when I got down to training camp, I just had that. Ever since then, I always, always got this chip on my shoulder. Wanted to be the Wanted to be the best version of me for real. Um, go out there and make plays and co keep doing what I've been doing, man. Keep building that confidence and keep building a good name for me. Like, I know, like, some things don't go our way, like being cut from the teams or something like that. But I always know that I'm good at everything because I, I know how everything is with business. I didn't know that at first, but I just always want to be the best version of me now and just live in that moment. So when I got these that call from New York Guardian, I was just like, it's time to go. Go make plays and everything. I love that. Immediately, you said it's time to go. You went, and then you went north of the border to go play for the Montreal Alouettes in the CFL. Uh -huh. I guess you thought it was a little too cold because then you came back down. Uh yeah, like uh, um, the Montreal thing. That was uh, it's kind of crazy because in Montreal, I was only there for like I was there for a good month, but I wasn't playing at all. I had trained mm -hmm. and end up like getting injured for like the whole season and like. That was, but nobody knew that. Like, so last year was like my first time coming back playing after that injury. So it was pretty like a big, a uh, big step for me last year, just coming back to play. Well, you came back to play, and you were on the Massachusetts Pirates, correct? Mm hmm. Yep. All right. We've talked to a couple of Pirates on our shows. You know, we talked to Toby Johnson over there on the Generals. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe we had yeah. another player. Can't remember who else. Oh, Toby's amazing. Love that dude. Can't believe he can do a backflip. You know, being a defensive lineman, but athlete, yeah. and he 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 be dunking too. He can look he a little duck a little bit. So he he oh, that's crazy. That's, that's crazy. Athlete. But uh, you come, you play the IFL, and the thing that I noticed when you first got drafted, you were drafted in the supplemental draft to the Houston Gamblers, mm. and I think it was like the week before y'all were supposed to report to training camp. You know, I had gone, I followed all y'all as soon as you got uh, drafted. I, I followed you, and I saw you were still playing in the IFL. And it blew my mind because you literally went into our football league like the next week playing in the USFL. I mean, how did your body go through it? It's crazy. Um, like, you know, I, I didn't really feel it like it was like a bad thing for real because I only had like I was going through the training cap there a little bit. So I was just thinking like it was getting my legs back under um, in shape for football. So once I got done with the like playing in the first game of there, I ended up coming to – the gamblers and was ready to go like off rip so that's how i felt about it i didn't really think about it It was like oh my body going through this and that like my body felt good like as long as i'm taking care of it i'm like i'm ready to go whenever so that's how i feel well i'm glad it worked out that way because you had me a little nervous i was like oh man this guy's still over there he's still with the pirates like maybe he's not coming to the usfl and i'd looked up your highlights right and i was yeah. like this guy we need him yeah and then i was like oh no oh no and then he reported and <laughs> all good all smooth sailing and then we got some cool catches a couple touchdowns that was a fun yeah. time so now we've gotten to you know the meat and potatoes of what my show is mm. the usfl the houston gamblers mm. what was season one like Did, like i've heard a lot of good things about the locker room about you know the relationships with players and coaches but i want to hear your side what is your story um like just just playing with the guys last year man i felt like we had the best roster offense and defensive wise for real like just practice was fun intense and just competed every day so i um enjoyed it a lot last year uh, besides the the losing but other than that like if we could have fixed those close 
losses that we had into wins, like it would be a whole different scenario because we had a pretty good team and I, I nobody can change the way I feel about that. Like I really felt like the offense and defense was probably the best in the USFL last year. You know, I'm not going to fight you on that. I completely agree, uh, especially on the de- deep defensive side of the ball. Uh, sure. Crazy. And then, I don't know, there seemed to be a little lack of consistency in a quarterback. I never thought it was receivers. Uh, you know, Clayton started getting bumped and bruised. Then Kenji hurt his hand. And it just never felt like anybody got to settle in. Yeah, it's just. Which is unfortunate. Yeah, it's just like the chemistry wasn't there like from the beginning to the end like it was always like little bumps and bruises or had to go to this quarterback to that quarterback Mm -hmm. but in different scenarios like that so hopefully this year you know we can settle down finally get us a quarterback and just make plays with him man and get us a leader that's gonna help lead us the game lead lead us the victories and everything oh yeah that's definitely my number one thing on the training camp list of things that need to happen is nail down who is QB1 before week one. I always I think, think it's a mistake. Quarterbacks. Yeah, I think we got the quarterbacks to do it as well. Like Kenji, pretty mm-hmm. good guy, Terry, and the new quarterback that we got. Martel um, Cozart. Martel, yeah. Like, I think they are pretty good. Like It's going to be a good, com- good, fun competition to watch and everything and just oh, yeah. seeing how they go through it and just helping them as well. Like I want to be there to help each quarterback as well. And whoever come out on top, I'm I'm there with them. And if any – even if you don't, like, I'm here for you as well. Like, I'm just here for the, the best guy to play and here to win for real and make plays. I love it. I had Terry Wilson on the show last week. Uh, you know, you had, I believe, a basketball game for your younger brother that you wanted to go to. So we we pushed it, and I was able to get Terry in. So I was like, this works perfect. That guy's mm. the truth, man. That guy, yeah, he's legit. Uh, mm. So I think, especially between him and Kenji, I think that could be the training camp battle to watch. But yeah, that brings up my next guy. topic. Your younger brother, Trey, is all over your social medias. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like you are his number one fan and that you are like just a fantastic older, older brother. An older brother myself, I would love to hear, you know, just how it is with your brother and watching him come up and playing football and going through what you went through. Um, It's like, I mean, it's like crazy. He goes to the same, the same high school I went to and everything. He went to, he chose to go to this high school instead of going to Warren, my, which my other little brother um played before then. Like right after me, I got another little brother named Ty that played as well that um went to Warren, my ended up going to Bowling Green as well. But Trey, um, I think Trey uh, pretty good as well. And I got a little brother, another one that's um a freshman in high school that go to the same high school. But Trey, man, he just... He um he never seemed to amaze me, man. Like he he do a lot of stuff that I'd be like, man, how did he get that? Like a couple of electricity um runs that he be having from punt returns, kick returns, like just coming out to slide off bubble screens and just being a playmaker with the ball in his hands. Like he done taught me some things that I really ain't know, and that's crazy. Like I'm thinking I'm older than him, you can't learn from him, but he done taught me a little bit of um things as well. But I'm just I'm just happy for him, man. Just one hundred keep his head on his shoulders, man, and keep keep being the guy he is and keep being great, man, and just keep learning and don't get lasted days of cool and stop having that chip on his shoulder, man. I need him to just keep being great. That's what I need him to do. Uh, I love it. I told you before the show that I was going to bring it up. I love, you know, when players are big on family because I'm a family guy myself and I absolutely love it. I also think it's awesome that you got T.O., Ty, Trey, and you – I can only imagine that the youngest is also another T name. Yep, Tayden. Yep. There you go. That's cool. I always love when parents do stuff like that. Yeah, you know? man. Both That's my parents name start with a T as well, so it's crazy. <laughs> Dang, no way. Yeah. Wow. That's almost impressive to be able to find that many T names that you guys like. But yeah. Mm-hmm. I digress. All right. So we're going into season two of the USFL. Now the elephant in, in the room is that the XFL has come back. Some players decided to leave and go. What made you decide to come and play in the USFL, be on the Houston Gamblers for season two? Um, first I just felt like coming back, like stuff was missing. Like we we missed on a lot last year. Like I felt like we should, like I said, those close games we had should have been reversed and been won by us as well. So I just felt like that chip of coming back and showing people like we we really that type of team that can go out there and win a championship. Like, instead of just coming out here and losing those close games this year, I want to reverse that and get the 
close close doves and get the wins this year. And also just show people, like, I want to have fun with the team. Like, show, show the funness that we have outside and practice and everything. Show it on TV as well. And have that chip on our show. Like, I always say that chip. Like, I was upset the way our, our record ended up being last year. And I always felt like the job wasn't done. So, those last couple of games, it showed, like, what we can do. But I think we can come out this year and um, start off right. We start off right last year, but then um, a couple of bumps and bruises in the middle, like like I said. But instead, let's go ahead and win all the way through. Oh, that is exactly what I'm looking for. I think you guys have the talent. You can do it. And I want to be at the championship, and I really want you guys to be there too. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but for everybody watching, it is the 14th today. Players, they show up on the 16th. You told me that you're driving on the 16th, heading down to Memphis. Are you excited? Have you packed? What's what's going through your mind right now? And that's what I was doing right now. Like every right before you call me, I'm in here just looking at stuff in the room, like what I gotta add to the bag and everything. Just in here just thinking, getting everything situated for I don't gotta really do much tomorrow. Just throw everything in the car and then just come out there. But yeah, I'm I'm, I'm very excited, man. Been it seemed like it just flew by. Like I was just like, dang, I, I kept looking at like hundred days till we leave. And it was like after that, I was like, it's here. Is here now. Mm -hmm. so I'm really excited, man. Can't wait till we get to get to see the guys and everything, and get back on the field and playing, man. Because that's what I love to do, and want to go out there and just keep making plays and keep making a name for myself and make a name for Houston Gamblers, man. And switch that scenario of us losing those close games to winning those close games. So I'm real excited to get down there and get back, get back to playing. I love it. I love it. It's perfect. Uh, so season one, you guys all started in the hotel. Same as it's going in season two for training camp. Did you end up moving out? Did you have a roommate on the team? Like, are you going to do it again? Um, No, I ended up staying at the hotel last year. I mean, I was just like, after just coming from the IFL and everything, I just want, didn't want to keep moving from place to place. So I felt like staying in the hotel was cool. But, yeah, the um way they handle it or everything with the pay and everything, I'll see if I'm going to stay or end up um moving in with a couple of teammates, but I got a couple of teammates that I look forward to probably moving in with after. So that's probably be the move this year. Oh, it's going to be a party, man. It's going to be good. Uh, I love that they got the pay up. They got that CBA ratified. It looks mm -hmm. fantastic, especially for a season two. That wow. is more than I was hoping for. And I'm so happy for you guys. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I, I love. I love watching players get to keep pursuing their dream of playing football, mm -hmm. getting paid to do it. I love seeing it. So oh, yeah, that's, that's really the happy about goal, it. man. That's the goal, man. I'm glad they came to an agreement as well. That's, that's just a step right there, uh, how the league will go. Like, it was a pretty good first year, so now let's keep going for the second year. Yes, sir. All right, Tio. So we have a, re a recurring segment on the show called The Rapid Incoming Breakdown, where I ask you four questions that aren't necessarily football-related, and you just answer with the first thing off the top of your head. Sound good? All right. Yep. All right. First question. If there was a Theo Redding, the movie, bio, it's all about life. what actor plays you? Ah. Uh, uh, oh, I got, I got, I'm going to go with, since he played a lot of sports movies and everything, I'm going to go with Michael B. Jordan. He can, he can play it. Michael B. Jordan. I've gotten a couple of those. All right. All right. I think he might be a little short. I don't think he's 6'1", but... Yeah, you know, that's, I'm sure they that's got a little the thing. Box. That's the thing. They got to zoom in on the camera a little bit on certain things. But yeah, that that that'd be all right. Like just zoom in on certain steps. Don't stand in too tall. People like that. You, that then you'd be cool. Oh yeah, I'm sure they got you know some little box that you can step on. You know, be the right height. For sure. You are deceivingly tall. You don't look as tall. Like you don't look crazy tall on TV. There's some monsters out there on the field. But mm -hmm. man, I see pictures of you and stuff. Deceivingly tall. And if yeah. I stand next to you, you're going to look even taller because I'm a short guy. So oh, man. who's that? <laughs> but Hello. question number two, <laughs> who is your favorite superhero of all time? Ah, superhero. Hmm. See, that one got to be like probably it's, it's between two. I go with the Incredible Hulk or uh, Superman. One of them two. One of all them right. Two. I think that's the first Incredible Hulk I've ever gotten. You know, a couple of Supermans here and there, Spider-Man, Batman. Uh, one Black Adam was Anthony Ratliff Williams. This was Black Adam. Black you are Adam. the first Incredible Hulk. That's a cool one. Yeah, man. Incredible <laughs> Hulk, you know, that's my guy right there, you know. He just, you know, once he get mad or something, you keep making him mad, you're going to get bigger, stronger, you know. He don't let that deceive him. But, 
you know, he only got that one weakness, and that's his that's his lady for real. And <laughs> you know, that's probably who can calm me down too, like my lady. So I'll be like, Yeah, that's me. All right, I respect it. So question number three, it's my personal favorite because I find it super interesting. What is your go-to song right now to work out or lift to? Ah, that's the easy one. Uh, um, Joe Jumbo Tron by Drake. We ain't Jumbo even out of Turkey. Takes in. Yeah, you know. Love yeah, it. Great. There you go. And then question number four: Who is your biggest inspiration in life that isn't an athlete? Um, I say my biggest imp- inspiration. I would say like probably I won't even pick no single person right now. I'll just say my family for real. Like the way everything is, the way we bond, how close we is, and how we able to get through like anything, just having to talk with each other or just helping each other out. And I just want that to stay that way. So I would say like my, my mom, dad, brothers, um, my nanny, grandmas, like everything, like them. Like that that's who keep me um my lady as well. Like that's who just keep me going in this sports stuff. Like just to see them have fun, everything and stuff I do for them, like keeps me motivated to go out there and play and everything. So I would say them, them, my family, like the biggest inspiration. I love it. I said, I'm a family guy earlier and you just keep piling it on, man. I love it. That says a lot about you. It says you're awesome. Just so you know, you're a great guy. Uh, I love hearing supportive families and stuff. It's hard, like playing football, especially after talking to as many players as I, as I have, it's hard. It is a grind. And to keep doing it, it's not easy. And so having a good foundation, good people behind you like that, that says a lot. Yeah. So, like really that's, that's who really like, if I got anything going on or like when I was going through a tough patch last year, I used to talk to them. They used to be like, just calm down. You know, everything happened for a reason or just give me different scenarios. How it could be probably worse if something else happened. So they just keep my head on my shoulders and everything. And keep me motivated to keep going and everything. So that's what I do it for, man. Well, I'm glad you got them. And I hope that they can come down to Memphis, get in those stands, and cheer for you while you're making another top 10 catch every game, every catch. It's going to be great. Uh-huh. I'm super excited about it. Uh, super so, excited. Yeah. So, Tio, we've reached the end of the show. And when we do that, we call it the end zone. And when we reach the end zone, I hand the floor over to you because we do these to promote the league, to promote our network. But most importantly, to promote you as a player and a person. So I hand the mic over to you. If you have a brand you want to, you know, endorse, a message to Gamblers fans, or just some shout outs to friends and family, floor is yours, man. Um, so you know, first off, I'd like to shout out to the family, you know. Shout out to my boy Ty, my mom, Juana, Dad, Tio, Brother Trey, my lady Juanita, brother Tayden, and my nanny. You know, shout out to all them. You know, it's about time for I go out there and make plays for y'all and have a great season. And shout out to a um, couple of clothing lines, my boy Tyler, really rare. My boy Dez, um, DMP, like shout out to them boys too, man. Go get y'all some gear. Y'all be looking very fresh, very fresh. So go get y'all that. But other than that, man, Houston fans, let's get ready to rock and roll, man. It's about that time, let's lock in, you know. Just time to go make plays and have fun and have a great season for real. Let's go. I could not have said it better myself. It is time to go make plays and have some fun. Tio, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. I really appreciate you coming on, especially while you were literally packing to take off your training camp. Yeah. Like You didn't have to do that, but I appreciate that you did. Uh, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you having me, man. It's been, it's been fun. Oh, it has appreciate, been fun. And I appreciate you for doing what you're doing as well, man. Like, taking care of the gamblers and everything, interviewing us and everything, and, like, helping us out with our, our brands and everything. Like you said, you just gave us the floor, like giving us that opportunity as well. And you getting the um, opportunity to meet us and everything. So can't wait to meet you down there um, during training camp and everything and during the games, man. And keep doing what you're doing, man. It's really going to pay off, man. Appreciate you. Well, thank you. You just, uh, you made my day. So <laughs> thank you very much for that. Um, I can't wait to meet you either, man. I got to come out. I can't wait to see everybody. It's going to be like, I know all these guys, but it's the first time I'm meeting them, right? So I'm very, very excited about that. Uh, But thank you again for coming on, man. Genuinely a pleasure. And safe travels heading down to Memphis. You know, hopefully it doesn't snow or anything on the way. 
Yeah, for sure, man. Don't I'm tired of the snow for real. But yeah, safe travels to yeah. you as well. All right. Well, thank you. And to everybody who watched, thank you so much. Make sure to go subscribe to the YouTube channel. You will be automatically entered into a giveaway for a signed Cavante Turpin USFL MVP Cowboys jersey. So go hit that subscribe button. There you go. Y'all have a good night. I'm in the big leagues. Don't miss me. Balling like Houston. Hey, feeling like Whitney.